What was David's reaction to hearing of Absalom's death? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse study of the book of 2 Samuel on Walking Through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 2 Samuel chapter 18, verses 19 to 33. But before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 19. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 2 Samuel chapter 18, beginning at verse 19. Then Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok, said, Let me run now and take the news to the king, how the Lord has avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said to him, You shall not take the news this day, for you shall take the news another day. But today you shall take no news, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. So the Cushite bowed himself to Joab and ran. And Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok, said again to Joab, But whatever happens, please let me also run after the Cushite. So Joab said, Why will you run, my son, since you have no news ready? But whatever happens, he said, let me run. So he said to him, Run. Then Ahimeaz ran by the way of the plain and outran the Cushite. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate to the wall, lifted his eyes and looked, and there was a man running alone. Then the watchman cried out and told the king. And the king said, If he is alone, there is news in his mouth. And he came rapidly and drew near. Then the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called to the gatekeeper and said, There is another man running alone. And the king said, He also brings news. So the watchman said, I think the running of the first is like the running of Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man and comes with good news. So Ahimeaz called out and said to the king, All is well. Then he bowed down with his face to the earth before the king and said, Blessed be the Lord your God, who has delivered up the men who raised their hand against my lord the king. The king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? Ahimeaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant and me your servant, I saw a great tumult, but I did not know what it was about. And the king said, Turn aside and stand here. So he stood. Uh, so he turned aside and stood still. Just then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, There is good news, my lord the king, for the Lord has avenged you this day of all those who rose against you. And the king said to the Cushite, Is the young man Absalom safe? So the Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise against you to do harm be like that young man. Then the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said thus, O my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died in your place, O Absalom, my son, my son. The coup was now over. Defying David's command to not kill Absalom, Joab and his men did just that. Why did they disobey the king? Well, as we'll find out in chapter 19, Joab was of the opinion, correctly, that Absalom deserved to die because of his crimes of overthrowing the king. And in war, it is just it is just to kill the enemy, even the leader of the enemy's army. And knowing David as Joab did, he likely thought that David would not exact justice against Absalom had he been kept alive, and so Joab took the initiative to kill Absalom himself. This fits right in with the character of Joab, who took no prisoners but killed those who were enemies to King David. Yet even though he did this, he knew that the king would not be pleased with the news, and so instead of sending Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok, and a high-ranking official with the bad news, he decided to send a Cushite, likely a slave, to David to do it. We do these things like this today. When we have to send uh, bad news to the boss, we send someone low on the corporate ladder to do that, rather than someone of importance who might be receiving much more punishment for being the bearer of bad news. But Ahimeaz was the one who had borne David all the intelligence he received while on the run, and so, after much discussion, Joab allowed him to go too. Now, we don't know which way the Cushite ran, but obviously it was slower, for Ahimeaz took the plain, meaning the plain of the Jordan River, and beat him to David. This is how we determine that the battle ended on the west side of the Jordan, by the way, and not in the mountains just north of Mahanaim. For if the battle was there, then Ahimeaz would have had to make his way down the mountain, into the plain, and then up to Mahanaim, a distance about two to three times 
more than the direct route, no matter how fast you run. With Ahimeaz coming first, David thought that he must be bringing good news. And in the grand scheme of things, he was. The battle was over and the armies of Absalom defeated. When David asked uh, about Absalom, Ahimeaz answered basically that at that time he was sent, he saw a great tumult, but did not know. This was very likely a lie, for Ahimeaz wanted to tell David the news first, to which Joab sent the Cushite with the news that Absalom's army had been defeated and Absalom was dead. Now some try to defend Ahimeaz by saying that it, that it is possible that he didn't know, and while anything, well, while anything is technically possible, since the story doesn't positively say, I find it highly unlikely that Ahimeaz is telling the truth to David here, rather lying in, in order to spare David's feelings, fully understanding now why Joab didn't want to send him. Upon hearing the news of Absalom's death from the Cushite, David wept in great despair. He said that he wished that he had died in Absalom's place. Now, why would David say this? Well, for one, Absalom is his son, and as we've seen, David loved him. No parent wants to see their children killed. But there's another reason at play here, too. God had said that the sword would not leave David's house. Two of his sons had now been killed as a result of David's sin with Bathsheba. How many more would come? Had David only died as a result of his sin, not only would he be spared this pain, but perhaps his sons would have lived. But in, see in seeing things this way, David is missing a huge point. Yes, Absalom's death was indirectly caused by David's sin in that the events that followed with Amnon and Absalom was likely helped along by that sin, but Absalom's death was directly caused by Absalom's own sin. Absalom was the one who rebelled against David. God didn't make him do it. Therefore, Absalom deserved to die. It is this attitude that Joab is going to have to correct in the next chapter, something that we'll see, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of 2 Samuel chapter 19, verses 1 to 8, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.